All right then, one of my most requested videos, I'm gonna do a tour of my entire setup. Right then, the last time I did one of these was when Rich was still doing the Beard and Vase thing. Uh, great little series actually, it's pretty stuff. Um, right, Rich runs a channel called The Beard uh, X16. Uh, Rich, lovely fella. And some of the stuff he does is just fantastic. He does some torn, but he also makes other stuff. Where the guy gets the ideas from, I just don't know. Right, I'll leave a link down below to Rich's channel. Uh, I would advise people to have a look, because as I said, some of the stuff he does is just fantastic. Right, um, right. the way I'm going to do this is, um, I know moving camera can make people feel weird. So what I'm going to do is, I'll do a section move the camera, do another section, move the camera, do another section, move the camera. Right, it's going to be the best way of doing this. Um, just so that the camera isn't moving all the time. And I'll go through what's in each section kind of thing. Okay, right, that's the door. There, right. And you come in, the first thing you see is this little pillar drill. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's only a small little Aldi special because I don't really have to use it that much. I do most of my drilling on the lathe. There's just a few things that I use that for, and that one is plenty big enough. As you'll probably figure out, uh, I don't have a lot of room in here. The workshop, it's a steel shed, as you're seeing from the intro, and it's only 10 by 12. And there's a lot of stuff in here, right? Right, we start at the top, up at the top, up there, right? is a load of general purpose stuff and uh, that red box there is that keeps all my chuck spares go into that right and then there's a there's a like a sharpener for drill bits beside it and that kind of stuff uh not really much wood torn and stuff up there apart from i do keep the inserts for the vases up there uh right what i'm going to do is as i'm going through this i'll be mentioning stuff that I've done videos on and just in case somebody wants to see them I'll leave a link up there to the video and a link below right now because of the way YouTube works I may not be able to get all the links up there so if there's anything that I mention that you think you might be interested in just check the list in the description and um, it'll there'll be a link down there to anything I've done a video on Right. If there's anything that's special, that's a special kind of video, and I think people might find useful, I'll actually mention it. Right. Uh, right. So now, on the rest of that wall is just general purpose tool stuff. Right. Apart from here, that cabinet there is all pen parts, uh, bushings, instructions for all different kinds of pens, and all are all in that cabinet. Right. That is uh, rubber gloves for when I'm doing resin. And these three here are boxes of my normal pens that I do. That top one is labeled Premier Pen, but I've stopped doing the Premier now and I've gone on to using Sierras. I just think they're a nicer kit. And uh, I think they're, basically, I think they're a better pen, right? Uh, in the middle there is the grinding system. It's a record power bench grinder. On that side, I have a 180 grit CBN for sharpening. And on the other side, there's a standard uh, wheel that just came with the grinder. It's an 80 grit and it's perfect for shaping. I have a couple of spare discs underneath there. Um, right, I'm using the Wolverine system with a very grind. I think it's great. Um, I tried the... Uh, what's it called? The one with the belt. Oh, I can't remember. I'll put it. I'll put it in a caption here. And I don't like the grind that comes off. I don't, I prefer the slight curve that that puts in the grind rather than the perfectly flat grind. 
um right i've done a video on how basically to make that system if you have the bench grinder on how to make that ba basically that system out of scrap you probably have lying around when turners are starting off it's there's a lot of money spent out and something that always kind of goes to the wayside is a grinding system i've made a video for on how to make it from scrap you probably have lying around the place and um it might save you a few quid until you can actually afford to buy a proper sharpening system right now over there they're just the jugs that i use for when i'm doing resin right right next bit right this bit is just under the workbench you've just been looking at right over there is a bank of drawers and they basically have stuff like exotic pen blanks and stuff in them where are we pointing there that's a bank of drawers they have exotic pen blanks that kind of stuff in them um if i'm doing something and there's a an off cut that i know can make a pen blank but it's too small to go in the off cut section it goes into those drawers and uh, there's also some other stuff over there uh, like there's bulk slim lines there's a drawer there of bulk slim lines and other stuff like that over there right there is resin the resin that i use underneath here this is basically an ikea little cubby hole thing uh we were using it for the kids we've got a new one so i brought this one out to the shed uh under there is more exotic pen blanks and half cuts uh that one there has a load of pens in it that i'm gonna do for a special occasion a video will be up on those kind of pens when it's closer and it's like it's it's almost a year away so but there's some really interesting pens in that in that yellow box uh the green one is exotic pen blanks and the other ones are basically the same stuff right that is that black box is for a project that hopefully is coming up if i can get the right thing i'm looking for right that's just a bin that big square box there is just a bin it's on wheels so we can wheel it in and out right we go on to the next section right then next section right don't worry about those bowls they're just the their orders that i'm going through they're rough torn and i'm just i have to finish them for orders right in behind there is the dust extraction system um i did a video on it explaining it and why i got that one and why i changed the filter and stuff on it link above link below of course and uh that's what's in that corner up here sorry i'm gonna have to move the camera for this bit try to keep it as smooth as possible right all right that's a stand for the woodcut ball cyber right in behind it is just like on a little shelf behind it are the discs i use for cutting ball blanks i prefer to cut freehand when i can so i just i have discs there going from eight inch up to 18 inch and it's just it's very quick to draw the uh the circles and just cut the freehand on the band so all right that box there has the uh trend air shield pro on it and it also has any other breathing mask in it it seals them away it keeps them away from dust um like there's the odd thing here that i that when i'm touring it i don't put the air shield on but it can create a little bit of dust and i want to keep as much dust as i can away from that thing so it gets locked in that box it charges in the box everything um one of the questions i get asked about the air shield is the battery right air shields come with the old style batteries you have to train them so basically i don't charge that until it's completely flat uh, in one of the videos I mentioned, in one of the videos gone by, I can't remember which one it was, I mentioned that the helmet starts beeping at me. When your helmet starts, when that starts beeping, it means it needs charging. When I'm finished, what I will do is I will actually leave that running until it goes completely flat and then charge it overnight. And uh, the battery's still lasting me eight, eight, nine hours maybe. Right, uh, I've done a video on the air shield and i've done a video on the woodcut right 
that yellow thing is just it's just an extra mask it's for when my little fella's in here with me Um, he'll put that on and he'll put uh, a dust mask on I have a dust mask in there for him uh, just when he's out hanging out with daddy like I like hanging out with him out here he was very proud of himself last week he actually 80% turned uh, a pen for his teacher and he was delighted with himself and I'm delighted that he's interested in doing this stuff right we go on to the next section all right then next section is the light it's a Laguna 1836 European spec uh, I've done a full video on it there's no point in me going into it uh, going in through it again um, it's a great light I use it as a workhorse it's never let me down it's turned everything I've thrown at it the only thing that I want to get on it is I want to get the extension for uh, doing over 18 inch bolts because I have a couple of pieces of wood I have one really really special piece that I'm not touching until I uh, until I get the extension and what I'll do is I'll move the lead up that way a bit and I'll take that table out of there and the extension will go there right uh, behind it you can see the hood for the extractor system it's I believe it's called a big mouth and it comes from Axminster I think it's a great yoke right uh, that's the disc I normally use for taking the backs taking the bottoms off balls that's just a joint set of coal jaws right now I'm gonna have to move the camera again a little bit here sorry right okay that's the tool rack I made that tool rack years ago and I've just gotten so used to using it I'm keeping it right Um they're all the main chisels that i use the red things up here are all uh different grades of sandpaper uh, i know the lighting in here might be a bit weird i've actually had to move the lights like that one there i've had to turn straight down that normally shines out the light <coughs> excuse me but i had to turn it straight down because um it was glaring in the camera when i did this first this is actually the third time i'm after doing this and uh, the first time was glare you just couldn't see half the stuff second time i missed the whole section of the workshop right uh right in here right right i'm actually going to move the camera again to do this bit right then here is where i keep the drills now um i use drills for sanding because i've i've tried one of the inertia sanders and because of the lyme disease i my grip isn't the best and I actually can't hold on to them that's why I use drills and what I have them in is a little holder there and uh, they where are you oh yeah um it's actually off one of the you know the hand whisk things that you use in the kitchen we bought a new one there was already a holder on the wall so I just grabbed this one out here for drills and it's dead handy it holds them perfectly that is actually a coaster that paul made sent it down to me and i like it so much i've actually put it on the wall in here it's really cool right over here is the all my chucks right and that bar there is uh that's that's an aldi special again um they came in i i had a few tools that I needed extra space for so they go up there uh is there anything else there not really right uh up higher up here is just somewhere for the um calipers and stuff to go and the new curve tool rest goes up there as well right we move and we go on to the next piece right i'm gonna have to pan down when i'm doing this bit right okay up there is they're all pieces of Irish timber that are drying out up there is just a chop saw and there's a few other tools uh, these two here right, I'm gonna pan down now right these two shelves here are my working shelves right uh, at the moment there's all finishes and sandpapers and stuff in there 
uh, that's actually a project I'm doing for a very special customer that angel there uh, I've done the wings twice and I haven't been happy with them so there's a thing with me if I'm not happy with something that doesn't come out of the workshop I haven't been happy with the wings for that uh, I know I swore I'd never do another one apart from the one with my sister but this is a very special client and she's been waiting a long time for it and I am doing it there's the start of it I've just I've done the wings twice and I haven't been happy with them so they've gone in the bin Um. Right, normally, say if I'm churning out snowmen and stuff, those two shelves are cleared and I will have the blanks on top and I'll put the finished stuff underneath. Uh, over here is a rack of exotics. Right, they're all exotic timbers. Uh, that's the stuff that I've picked for orders that I have. Right, this that, that isn't my main wood store. Uh, I'll show you that later on. Right. Down below that is, right in there behind the bin, is just, uh, it's an off-cut shelf, that one and that one. That one there and that one there are off-cut shelves. And that bottom one is just general purpose tools. Right, okay, we'll move again. Right then, next bit, over beside the window. Right, in these up here, uh, this set of drawers on the wall up on top are spare band saw blades. Um, there's an electric chainsaw back there. There's a small grinder that's just up there because it's the only place I have to put it. Um, that top one is full of kits like uh, coffee scoops and ice cream scoops and stuff like that. That top drawer is full of them. That second one is full of plastics for when I'm doing the repen, the recycle pen. Uh, out of plastics, uh, there's a video on that, right? And um, that bottom one there is full of deer antler. Uh, I've done a few videos on deer antler, people make mistakes when they're doing for deer antler, um, and the main complaint is the smell. The problem when the smell is, is your deer antler is too fresh, <laughs> it's that simple. There's hardly any smell. Well, there is a slight one, but not a lot. Uh, if you if you've let your deer antler dry, all right? Because remember, what you're basically cutting there is bone, all right? Uh, here, that is the small toaster oven that I use for melting the plastics when I'm doing them. Uh, how I melt them and stuff is it's all in the video. There's a couple of videos. Is there a couple of videos on that? I think there is a couple of videos on that, all right? And that's the microwave. That's basically resin I use for. All right? Okay. We move again. Right then, there is the Sharp Dragon, uh, Tom Tom painted that, Tom sadly has passed away, Tom was a lovely fella, local guy here, lovely fella, and sadly he passed away this year, uh, he'd be missed, right, there's the bandsaw, it's a SIP 14 inch professional, there's a full video on that as well, uh, that is my sticker board. If you sent me a sticker, you're on that board. That list down there is just a list of orders I have to do. Right, there's the blue suits. There's two of them. Right, and that's kind of it for that section. And there's one section left, which is the ceiling. As I said, I don't have a lot of room here, so every inch is used. Right, so open the ceiling. I have the air scrubber. Uh, there's a video on that one as well. And uh, this here is the latest addition to the shop, but it's going to get moved from there because it's too loud. It's a small little compressor. I don't have room for a big one. And I just really needed it for blowing stuff away when I'm working on the lathe. And for a project that's coming up, it's actually the same project that I was talking about earlier with that black box. It's the same project. I just need to get one vital piece for it and there'll be a video on it and i'd say it's it's a dead handy project um but i still have to wait until i get that other piece for it right and then straight above us there's no point in moving the camera for it i have some wood storage of uh really long pieces of wood that there isn't anywhere else for right as i said i'm very tight on space in here 
Right, now what we'll do is we'll go outside and we'll have a look at wood storage and what's outside of here. I was actually having a conversation, a phone conversation yesterday. <coughs> um, part of it was the room I have here. Right, so I'll go and move this and I'll be back to you in a second. Now here, the camera may move a little. I don't have a lot of choice in it because I have absolutely no room here. Okay, this here is the workshop, right? And buttered up against it is this green shed. Right, the green shed is basically it's fuel storage. Like there's firewood in there, there's turf, coal, that kind of stuff. That's there's nothing else but that in that shed, apart from my saw horses in there, right? And there is the kiln. I've done a full video. Well, I haven't done a full video on the kiln. I mentioned it in a video and I went through it. Uh, I'll leave a link below to it, right? Uh, and right next to it is the wood storage shed. We'll go up there and have a look in a second. That is a piece of Spanish chestnut I have left outside because I wanted the spalt. And down here is a big uh, oak log that I'm uh, trying to get the spalt a bit as well, right? Uh, all that stuff on the ground is actually pine needles. Uh, the neighbor has this pine tree and it sheds constantly. Right, so we'll go up to this next piece. Right, as I said, there's gonna be some movement out here. Right, the blue there is actually a lot of monkey puzzle that I got. And I'm just keeping it dry with a tarp because I don't have any room anywhere else for it. Right, I have this unlocked. This is normally locked. Uh, and I have the alarms all turned off right in here. This is the wood storage shed, right? Okay, here we have bowls basically, right? There's some, there's some long stuff there, right? Including a lot of bog oak that I'm just leaving sitting there drying until I can handle it. Uh, that project I mentioned earlier, it's got something to do with that, right? Um, I've done a couple of bog oak videos, one which has a quarter of a million views, was basically an experiment to see if it could dry using the microwave method. The reason I did that video was I had a load of bog oak and I had a fair idea that the microwave method wouldn't work because it's so wet. But I wanted to show it in case somebody just got a piece of bog oak that was wet and I didn't want them to have to try it so I did it. Um, it said that was kind of a weird video actually. Yeah, right. Um, in there is all behind, behind that piece of monkey puzzle and that piece of oak. In behind there is giant wood. Right. Uh, I'm not going to go near it until I get that extension I mentioned earlier on for the light. Right, up here is basically bowl blank storage. Right, the some like over the ones over that side are sealed, the ones this side aren't. Because anybody who's watched the channel for a while knows I like to deliberately crack wood and then fill it with resin because I think it adds, adds an extra pop. The some there that will crack, the some that won't. Right, like all here, that's all Spanish chestnut. There's ash, there's oak. Oh, there's a lot of different woods up there. There's some very heavy ash in there at the back. Um, and there's a couple of cracks for nicely farming in some of it. Like, there's a nice crack in that piece there, which is white oak. And there's a nice crack in that piece there, which is white oak. Uh, and some of it hasn't cracked yet, which is a pity. I might have to force cracks in some of it. Uh, but as I said, that's all ball blanks and that's like, that goes back about three, four feet. It's whatever the, the width of a pallet is. Anyway, right here we have all exotics. Right, that's all exotic timber there. Um, this shed, myself and a friend built because I couldn't get one to fit where I am. Uh, the I, I don't as I said I don't have a lot of space and I had to get stuff to fit in. So uh, we had all the windows replaced, which is where this door came from. 
and so we built the shed basically around the door and um, over there is basically just all it's your normal shed stuff that you'd have in your normal garden shed like a power washer and stuff uh, there's also some bowls and stuff st stored up at the top there there's a couple of chainsaws in there um, but this shed is normally kept locked and the whole place is covered with cameras and alarms so I'm it's fairly safe right and down here is log storage right. it's a lean-to that's on the, that's on the side of the shed and it's just log storage it's hard to get it all in because it's no room so like the wall is right there that's the wall of the house right there's that width between the shed and the wall right um all the stuff in here is has got its end sealed apart from that top piece of monkey puzzle because there's no need to seal it uh, monkey puzzle doesn't crack when it's drying and uh, i have an idea for that log anyway right so basically that's the entire setup right. just close this again i don't want to leave that one open because i don't want moisture in there that's basically the entire setup right we go back into the workshop all right then so that's the entire setup that's the tour it says one of the most requested ones i've had is can you please show us your setup so the answer is there you go uh, so if there's any questions about how i've done something in here just give me a shout i've no problem answering it maybe something is giving you an idea how to store stuff in your own place especially if your workshop is small um, and that's really about it so if you enjoyed that one i got anything out of it if you wouldn't mind give us a, a like on the video as i said any questions just give me a shout and i'll see you in the next one